this video, we're gonna learn how to stabilize footage. This is a really important process if you've captured some shaky footage and you want to stabilize it in post-production. So we're gonna jump into Premiere Pro and we're gonna have a look at two examples. So the first example that we have was captured handheld on the Canon C200 in 50 frames per second. The first thing that I did was to interpret the footage as 24 frames per second. So if I reveal this in my project and I right click and go to modify interpret footage. You can see I've already assumed this frame to be 23.976 or 23.98 when in fact it was shot at 50 frames per second. So this is with the effect applied. So if I go back to my effect controls, you can see that I've already applied a warp stabilizer effect to my original footage. So this is smooth enough and I'm quite happy with that. Let's move the second example over there. So this is what it looks like without any stabilization. It's still okay because it's in slow motion, but really I don't really, I'm not gonna use this because it's, it's a bit too shaky for my liking. So the first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna delete the st stabilizer effect we're going to go to our effects panel and then we're going to type in warp and then we're going to apply the effect by double clicking and it's automatically going to analyze the footage for us so if we go back to effect controls you can see it's analyzing it frame by frame and it automatically chooses these uh, options for us smooth motion for the result smoothness of 50 percent you can see you can make it even uh, higher, up to 100%. And then the method of stabilization, and then the framing. For this, I think 50% isn't too bad. Yeah, I mean, this is, this is very usable. It's only about two to three seconds. I'm quite happy with this. But you always want to make sure that you don't see any warping so i can see a bit of warping here but it'll be quite hard for someone to notice so maybe i'll bring this down to maybe 30 percent let's have a look at this let's bring the let's do half okay that's a little bit better what i also do sometimes is go to my advanced option here and check detailed analysis and that will go through the analysis one more time in a much more detailed manner so let's have a look at that Yeah, I'm, I mean, I'm quite happy with that. So let's have a look at the before. This is the before. It's quite shaky. And this is the after. Much, much better. It's always helpful to have a look at different smoothness percentages to see which one looks the most natural. Because the last thing you want to do is uh, for someone to notice that it looks really uh, warpy as such. I've seen it in some footage where the effect has been applied way too much and it just doesn't look good. The stabilization effect can only help you to a certain extent. So if your footage is really, really shaky, uh, it's just not going to be a very easy task for the, for the software to do. So the second example we're going to look at is some hyperlapse footage that I shot also in Dubai. So this is the scene without any stabilization. So this is a frame after frame without any stabilization. So you can see I've already applied a stabilizer effect, but let's just apply a new one. We're gonna to go to effects again, double click on warp stabilization. Let's have a look at this. This is at 50%. It's already like acceptable. I think we can probably do a little bit better. So we're gonna to go to detailed analysis. Okay, let's, let's have a look at that. That's slightly better. But I actually prefer the 
non-detailed analysis option. So I'm going to go back to, I mean, let's have a look at maybe 25%, see what that does. This seems also good. So 25% detailed anal analysis. Let's untick detailed analysis and have a look at this at 25%. The higher the percentage of the smoothness, the more is going to crop. So this frame in here is where it stabilizes crops and auto scales. You can stabilize only, stabilize crop, stabilize crop, auto scale, stabilize and synthesize edges. I usually use the stabilize crop and auto scale. Sometimes the stabilize only works, but you can see here it's just not going to work because you can see the edges of the frame. So we're going to go back to stabilize and crop and auto scale at 25% without the detailed analysis. And I'm really happy with this. This is the after and this is the before. Huge difference. Very big difference here. Amazing. What I also sometimes do if Premiere Pro is struggling to give me the result that I want, I, I sometimes nest the file and then I can apply another warp stabilization effect, which in this case I don't really need, but I just want to show you that sometimes you can apply warp stabilization more than once. So let's see what it does now with two. Let's go to maybe like 24%. It's just cropped in a little bit more. We can go even lower, maybe like 5%. That's even more stable now. This is like literally perfect. But again, you can see that the first frame kind of crops in a lot sooner. This actually worked really well with two times the stabilization effect. So yeah guys, this is how to stabilize footage, whether it's handheld footage that you captured or footage that you captured on a gimbal that wasn't perhaps balanced perfectly. You can apply this effect, but you can also apply it to hyperlapse footage where you have some movement in your time lapse. So this wraps up this video. If you have any questions, please let me know and I'll see you in the next webinar.